Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Superform. This is going to be similar to your Simple Forms or your Formtastics, but this one's going to be uh, more like Flex than it is like the HTML.ERB tools that we've used in the past. So what do I mean by that? Well, with your Simple Form or with your Formtastic, you're ultimately creating a .html.erb file. That means you're going to have like HTML mixed with Ruby. In this case, because you're using Superform, it's going to be a plain Ruby object that you're using uh, to create your form. So you're going to be writing your forms in Ruby, which does mean you have to think about things a little bit differently than you traditionally do in Rails. But if you're already using something like Flex, which we've covered before on the channel, where you create your like HTML uh, components in plain Ruby, like right here with this card, uh, then you're probably going to be pretty comfortable with this because you're ultimately just using some Ruby classes to create your your elements. Uh, similarly, you're going to be creating your uh, like your forms using these these Ruby functions that you're going to be calling, right? So how do we actually use this? Pretty simple stuff. Uh, we just have to run two commands. So we're going to go ahead and do a Rails new video. So the bundle add again is always optional. You can just add the gem to your gem file if you so choose. Then you're going to run your super form install command. The main thing we're going to be stressing here or that we're going to be focusing on is just replacing what a scaffold looks like, because I think the readme does a really good job of showing you how to use this further. But for the most part, we're just going to be like getting you up and running. And then you can just follow what the readme has for whatever else you need to do, because a lot of the examples in here are really actionable where it's like, oh, you want to create like a admin input form. And then there's just like an actual admin input form that shows you how to do this with like your tool tips and stuff. So that's pretty easy. But to actually do this, we're going to CD into our video. We're going to run a bundle add super form. And then once we run that, we're going to do this Rails G super form colon install command. And again, if you don't want to use bundle add, you can just add the gem to your gem file and then run a bundle install. But we're going to go ahead and do this Rails G super form. You can see that adds the flex Rails gem, does the flex install, does the uh, does the insertions into our application.rb file. And then down here, it's going to do a bunch of stuff that we can take a look at right now. So what you're going to end up with here is going to be, uh, you're going to have like a, Similar to your application controller, you're going to have like an application view that you're going to use. It's going to be over here in your uh, app, your views, you're going to have this application view. So this is going to be like your overall wrapper around your, your views now, where before you would have like your application controller or like your application record, right? Or your application mailer, you get the idea. So you always have this like application level Ruby file. Now you have something similar for your views. And they also have two other folders. One's your component. This is going to be for your application component. It includes your uh, helpers and then, you know, the rest of this. We then have the form uh, application. This is going to allow you to configure what your forms look like. So we'll take a look at that in a second because it's actually pretty cool. But we can do a Rails G scaffold post for a title and a body of type text real quick. Then we can run a Rails DB colon migrate and then we can run a Rails S real quick over to localhost port 3000 slash posts and if we click on new post we can see our form right here so the reason why this is so cool with this application form specifically is we can come in here and we can uh, render one of these forms so we'll come into our posts and instead of doing this form.html.erb we'll just go ahead and we'll delete this and then we'll right click we'll create a new file and we'll just call this form.rb so the reason why we're doing it like this is uh, just so that you can sort of see what this looks like alongside your scaffold. You'd probably want to put your form in your forms directory and then render it from there. But we'll take a look at how to do this from your, your scaffold. So to actually do this, we have to say this has a class of posts colon colon form. It's going to come from our application form, which again is up here. So our forms application form. Then if we want to like actually create the form, we have to create a template. And then in this template, we have to say, all right, well, we know uh, we have a title, right, of type string, which means, oops, title of type string, which means in general, we do like a form dot text field for the title, right? And then similar, similarly, we have a body of type text, which means we generally do a form dot text area for the body, right? What we can do now is we can just say, I need a row for the field with a title, and this is gonna be a dot input. And then we can do a row for the field uh, or a row field for the body. But this is going to be of type text area. 
And this is going to give us our labels and it's going to give us the rest of the stuff. So if we save this, we're going to get a like missing template error now. That's fine because what we actually have to do is come into our new.html.erb file. And in our new, we now have to say, all right, we need to render this. So to render this, we're going to change this from a render uh, form. This is instead now going to be a render for posts colon colon form dot new and then at post. So again, this is going to be slightly different syntax, but hopefully you understand why we're doing this. We have our form over here with a class of post colon colon form. So we're calling post colon colon form dot new to create a new object, uh, which we're just grabbing from right here. Here's our class. We're creating the new object and then we're just passing in this at post, which goes into our template, right? Now, if we come over here and we refresh, this looks exactly like the scaffold we previously had. But if we come into like our application form, we can just say, all right, you know what? Actually, I want all of this to have a color of, of green. Sure, why not? Go ahead and save this. And now all of our components are gonna have this green color, or we can go with like red if we want to. So in here is where you're gonna be uh, modifying all of your, your uh, forms together. So similar to like your application layout file where you can modify all of your layouts, right? That's fine, but what, what we can also do is we can say, all right, we have this form here. What I'd really like to do is uh, let's use this for our edit as well. So we can come in here, we can just change this as, as well. We'll just say this needs to be from the post colon colon form dot new pass in the at post and then if we do a test and a case here click create post click edit this post we can do a test two case three click update and you'll see that works just fine but because we're using these forms now we can actually come into our controllers our post controller and we can change how we do this we can get rid of these post params we actually don't need these anymore and we do have to do a little bit of setup for this but it's fine because i think it actually makes it a little bit cooler up here, we need to include the Superform Rails strong parameters. You could, of course, include this across all your controllers if you wanted to. And then instead of doing this post equals post.new with our post params, we can do something like this. We're going to do a, uh, where is it right here? We'll say app post equals assign params dot require for the post, which looks similar to what we did before. But we're going to do this to the post colon, oops, sorry, posts colon colon form dot new and we can pass in a post dot new so we're assigning the parameters requiring the post and we're uh, telling it to assign this to our post form dot new and the reason why this is nice is because now you don't have to go through here and say all right well i need like the title i'm gonna need the body i'm gonna need the rich text area i'm gonna need the nested form attributes and all that other stuff which honestly just drives you you know nuts while you're doing this uh, and then similarly you can come down here and you can say, let's do a uh, at post equals assign params require. And then you're going to do this to the post form new. Uh, but instead of doing the post dot new in here, we're going to pass in the at post. Right. Uh, so something like this is actually what we're going to do. Then we can come in here and we can say if at post dot save instead of dot update. And then we can come over here, click edit, say hello world, click update post. And now that updates just fine. So your syntax here is a little bit different. It's a little bit more cumbersome in line right here, but the trade-off is you don't have to come down here and you don't have to have like your entire like hash array predefined for your strong parameters because you're just grabbing this ultimately from your form.rb file, right? And if you ever want to learn about this, there's a section in here, I think on controller, uh, should be right here where it says, you know, it eliminates the need for strong parameters by assigning the values of the params hash through your form via the assign method. Here's what it looks like now. So this is where I'm pulling this from. So you can see uh, the form is created, hash is assigned. If the params include data outside of what a form accepts, it will be ignored. So you can like, uh, you can imagine similarly to how you do it before, where let's say you have like an unpermitted unper parameter for like your user ID, for example, it would throw an error in your console. This is going to do something similarly, but without you needing to define the like allow list before you can have those things denied, right? So that's pretty cool. And again, with all of these things, if we come over here, you'll notice we still have the flex components. So this is where it's going to be probably the most useful. I can do this in like a follow-up video if anyone's interested, uh, but you have these, these pretty basic forms here that are going to get a lot of uh, flexibility out of uh, having these uh, these components built in plain Ruby. 
That's also going to mean that at the end of the day, your testing procedure is just going to be another Rails test where you test whatever you have for your your forms to make sure that this is working with just some plain Ruby tests, as opposed to some of the hoops you sometimes need to jump through. You have like your your HTML to your B files to make sure that everything's working as you would expect it to. Now, of course, this is deceptive. I just ran a Rails test. This isn't actually testing it, uh, but hopefully you, you get the idea and you understand the appeal that this is like a pretty uh, self encapsulated thing to test as opposed to what you would normally have. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about this in case people hadn't heard about this, because I know this has been a relatively new development. I think he's been working on it for like two months now. Uh, and I thought it might be fun to to talk about it and get people's thoughts on, on you know, what, what they think of taking this this plain Ruby approach would be. Because I know there's a lot of interest with like using um, the WebAssembly Ruby that we covered a while ago on the channel. And this feels like it's in a similar vein where you're moving towards just using Ruby for everything. Yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was informative and helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next one.